Hello and welcome to the third and final video on glycogen metabolism and glycolysis. And in today's short video we're going to look at how glucose is used to produce energy. We're going to look at a process called glycolysis. And we're going to discuss the key enzymes of this pathway and in particular how they are regulated by uh, molecules like ATP. So what exactly is So what is glycolysis? Well, glycolysis is the breakdown or lysis of glucose. And it's glycolysis is a highly regulated sequence of enzyme catalyzed reactions that will convert glucose to two molecules of pyruvate and two molecules of adenosine triphosphate or ATP. ATP is known as the universal currency of free energy in all biological systems. ATP is used and when energy is required. So what does the glycolysis pathway look like? Well, it starts off with glucose, which then undergoes a series of enzymatic reactions. And eventually we end up with pyruvate or pyruvic acid. Now for this course, we're not, I'm not going to expect you to learn this pathway by, by heart. It's just important that we understand some of the key enzymes that regulate this pathway. And the first enzyme that we will talk about is called phosphofructokinase. So as the name suggests, this enzyme will add phosphate groups. So it converts fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-phosphate. So this is the most important enzyme in the glycolytic pathway. So it's a key regulation point. Converts fructose 6-phosphate to 1,6-phosphate. And its activity is regulated by multiple allosteric modulators. And these include ATP, AMP, protons, citric or citric acid, and another uh, metabolite aside uh, molecule of glycolysis called fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, which we will talk about later. If you go back and look at the pathway, you'll notice that there is a single arrow, not a two-directional arrow. So this is the first committed step in the glycolytic pathway. In other words, that once this fructose 6-phosphate has been converted, Back in glycolysis, it, the, enzyme, the same enzyme doesn't catalyze this reverse reaction. So what are the key regulators? Well, its activity is inhibited by ATP. And if you think about this, this makes sense. So the purpose of glycolysis, one of the purposes, is to generate ATP. So if we have an excess of ATP, we don't want to be stimulating the activity of the pathway any further. So therefore, ATP will inhibit one of the key enzymes, the fructose, phosphofructokinase. And it does this by binding to an allosteric site and thereby lowering the affinity of the enzyme for its substrate, fructose 6-phosphate. Other molecules we talked about were AMP. So AMP and ATP will compete for the same site. So whereas ATP inhibits it, AMP will activate the enzyme. So the ratio in the cell of ATP to AMP is really vital in controlling the activity of this enzyme. Protons will also in inhibit the enzymatic activity of this enzyme. So this is important when you think about, say, muscle cramps. So muscle cramps are caused by an accumulation of uh, excessive production of lactic acid. So at the end of glycolysis, pyruvate will go on to uh, generate more ATP and we'll cover this in further lectures. But in the absence of oxygen, this, lac this pyruvate is converted to lactate and this will produce protons and these protons will inhibit the activity of phosphofructokinase. This lactate production it also causes a lowering of blood pH and this is a case of uh, metabolic acidosis. So lactate is responsible for lowering blood pH in a process called metabolic acidosis. 
So phosphofructokinase is also regulated by a molecule called citrate, which is a product of the citric acid cycle. Glycolysis and the citric acid cycle are linked by the decarboxylation of pyruvate to form acetyl-CoA, which will then enter the citric acid cycle. We will cover more about that in a future lecture. High levels of citrate in the, indicate that there's, there's plenty of uh, carbohydrate precursors in the cell and therefore glycolysis needs to be switched off. So citrate will bind to phosphofructokinase, adding to the inhibitory effect of this abundance of ATP. Fruct fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is a side product from glycolysis. Remember that fructose 6-phosphate is normally converted to fructose 1,6-phosphate. But what can happen is that if not enough of the fructose 6-phosphate is converted to the 1,6-phosphate, this can mean that the phosphofructokinase is not working fast enough. Then the fructose 6-phosphate will be converted to fructose 2,6-phosphate. And this in turn will activate phosphofructokinase. And this is a very strong activator. So the, the 2,6-bisphosphate will bind to phosphofructokinase at an allosteric site, enhancing the activity. So if we get a buildup of the, of the 6-phosphate, this will be converted by an enzyme called phosphofructo-2,6-bisphosphatase to the 2,6-phosphate. This will in turn increase phosphofructokinase, then leading to conversion of, two, of the 6-phosphate to the 1,6-phosphate. This is a process of, called feed-forward stimulation. Let's return to the glycolytic pathway. And we now consider another enzyme that we've come across before called hexokinase. So hexokinase, as we know from the enzyme lectures, it comes in three or four, sorry, four different isoforms. But hexokinase one, two, and three are inhibited by by glucose six phosphate, and this is a process called feedback inhibition. So we know that glucose is converted to glucose six phosphate by hexokinase. So the product itself will inhibit the enzyme. So this means that if glucose 6-phosphate levels rise, this will then feed back into the pathway and stop hexokinase from working. Going along with this, if the activity of phosphofructokinase is inhibited, this will in turn lead to an increase in glucose 6-phosphate levels, which will then feed back into the pathway and inhibit hexokinase. So anything that inhibits phosphofructokinase will in turn lead to inhibition of hexokinase. In the liver is a different uh, circumstance because this, remember, has a different isoform of hexokinase 4 and this enzyme is not inhibited by glucose 6-phosphate. So this is besides the uh, differences in the KM the sort of affinity for glucose. This enzyme is distinct from, the hexokinase 4 is distinct from the other isoforms in that it's not inhibited by glucose 6-phosphate. Again, let's turn our attention back to the glycolytic pathway. And we look at our final key enzyme, which is called pyruvate kinase. So this is responsible for the uh, conversion of phosphoenolpyruvate to pyruvic acid. So pyruvic kin kinase catalyzes again an irreversible reaction and again it's regulated by key allosteric interactions. If ATP levels are high this inhibits the enzyme whereas if we have fructose 1,6-bisphosphate uh, this will actually switch on this enzyme. Remember that fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is the product of uh, phosphofructokinase. 
So if, this, if levels of this particular molecule are building up, we know that glycolysis needs speeding up, and so this molecule will bind to uh, pyruvate kinase, and again, this is an example of feed-forward stimulation. There is an example of uh, reversible modification, so glucagon. Remember, gluc we've come across glucagon before. So this will promote uh, phosphorylation of this enzyme, and this phosphorylation will lead to inhibition. So which one of the following statements concerning glycolysis is correct? Is it A, fructose 2,6-bisphosphate inhibits glycolysis? B, hexokinase allosterically regulated by glucose 1-phosphate? C, phosphofructokinase is allosterically regulated by ATP, fructose 2,6-bisphosphate and citrate? D, pyruvate kinase is activated by phosphorylation or E, Pyruvate kinase is allosterically modulated, sorry, allosterically regulated by ATP and fructose 2 6 phosphate and citrate. And if you'd like to have a go at this, I'll just wait for a second before I reveal the answer. And of course, the answer is C. So if we look at the answers in turn, fructose 2 6 bisphosphate actually promotes, it doesn't inhibit glycolysis. Hexokinase is allosterically regulated by glucose 6 phosphate, not by the 1 phosphate. If we go to D now, pyruvate kinase is activated by phosphorylation. Well, that one is incorrect because it's actually inhibited. Remember, glucagon would stimulate uh, accumulation of cyclic AMP and activation of PKA. This will lead to phosphorylation, which will inhibit the enzyme. And of course, pyruvate kinase is not regulated by ATP, the 2,6-phosphate and citrate. That is, it's, it only regulates phosphofructokinase. And the correct answer is C. Which one of the following is correct when blood glucose is low? Is it A, glucose uptake will be high in the muscle and the brain? B, glucose phosphorylase will be inactivated in the liver? C, insulin will stimulate glycogen breakdown? D, liver fructose bisphosphate will be, 1,6 bisphosphate will be high? Or E, pyruvic kinase in the liver will be activated by phosphorylation? If you'd like to have a guess, I'll just wait before revealing the answer. Okay, and the answer is, of course, A. So when blood glucose is low, this means that the muscle and the brain, which really need the energy, will be actively uptaking glucose because they need the energy. So therefore, the uptake in those particular uh, body tissues will be high. Glycogen phosphorylase will not be activated. It will be inactivated. It will be actually activated. Remember the, pho the phosphorylase breaks down glucose and, and because if blood glucose is low, the opposite will happen. Insulin doesn't stimulate glycogen breakdown. It actually stimulates glycogen synthesis. The 1,6-bisphosphate levels will be low in the liver and pyruvate kinase, again, is inactivated by phosphorylation, so that statement is incorrect. And we have another multiple choice question here. So which one of the following statements is correct if adrenaline acts on muscle? Is it A, glycogen phosphorylase will be inactive? B, hexokinase will be inhibited by fructose 6-phosphate? C, glucose 2,6-phosphate synthesis will be stimulated? D, phosphofructokinase will be activated by ATP, or E, pyruvate kinase will be stimulated by fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. And if you'd like to have a go at this, I'll just wait while you pause the video before I reveal the answer. And of course, the answer is E, pyruvate kinase will be stimulated by fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So 
A is incorrect because remember adrenaline will stimulate glycogen breakdown so therefore the phosphorylase enzyme will be active not inactive. Hexokinase will not be inhibited by fructose 6 phosphate because it, if anything it is inhibited by glucose 6 phosphate so that's the incorrect molecule. Glucose 2,6 phosphate synthesis will be stimulated. Well, we haven't covered any molecule called glucose 2,6 phosphate. So the molecule we would, would, would be talking about is the 2,6 phosphate, which would activate phosphofructokinase. Phosphofructokinase in D will be activated by ATP. Well, that's incorrect because phosphofructokinase is actually act, is inactivated by ATP. So of course that leaves the correct answer to be Phosphopyruvate kinase, which is stimulated by fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So to summarize the glycolysis, it is the conversion of glucose to pyruvate with the net generation of two molecules of ATP and another molecule called nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, which is important in the electron transport chain, which we will cover in more detail when we talk about the citric acid cycle. The key enzymes that you need to uh, remember are phosphofructokinase, hexokinase and pyruvate, which are all regulated by allosteric interactions with molecules. And of course, glycolysis is the prelude to the electron transport chain in the citric acid cycle. And this is actually where most of the energy held by glucose is released. But we will cover this more in a future lecture series. And of course, if you'd like to read any more about glycolysis, then you'll find the information in chapters 15 to 19 of Stryer. Thank you very much for listening.